So I went for a cross-country ride this weekend. You know, one of those big rides when you're completely spent by the end of it. I had my feet up on the sofa, and on the TV it was the Tour de France. And I thought, how do they do it for three weeks? So I thought, I'll go and ask someone who knows. Ah, Matt Stevens. You've raced bikes for 20 years, ridden the Grand Tour. You might be able to help me out. You've been filming me all along. Matt. Uh, how do they race for three weeks? That's a good question. Um, a very good question, actually. It's, uh, it takes a hell of a lot, but yeah. what you have to bear in mind is that many of the riders that do a Grand Tour have already been professionals for many, many years. Yeah. And quite often, the younger riders coming through, sort of 2021, 20, their first ever Grand Tour, they may only actually ride a week or a week and a half or, or kind right. of 10 days before building up. Um, it's just an accumulation of miles over several seasons. Um, but then if you move on to Grand Tour winners, um, you're looking at guys in their mid to late 20s and even early 30s, like Bradley yeah. Wiggins was 32 by the time yeah. he won his first Grand Tour. But it does take a lot of time and it's the accumulation of miles and kind of endurance over several other years. So we've got these guys who are going for the yellow jersey, that they want to win the race, and then we've got sprinters. Is there something different physiologically about these people? Can one do the other or do they literally have to choose which one they're going to go for? Generally speaking, in the, in the modern era, uh, there's a real differential. So you've got the GC yeah. riders, general classification. So your riders along the lines of Alberto Contador, Chris Froome, slim, skinny yeah. guys who can go up the mountains yeah. extremely rapidly. Uh, and then you talk about sprinters. So let's look at uh, Andre Greipel, uh, Mark Cavendish, for example, Marcel Kittel, three of the finest yeah. sprinters. And when you look at the physiological attributes, so you just compare a photograph of the two, yeah. it's like comparing a marathon runner to a 100 meters runner. There so really is that sort of difference. Would it be impossible for Cav to win the GC? Yeah. Uh, I mean, he, he will focus completely differently. He'll yeah. look at picking off stage wins. He'll be looking at maybe the green jersey competition. And just yeah. to briefly explain that, that's an accumulation of points right. in relation to getting up there in the sprints rather than the overall time because the sprinters will lose lots of time in the mountains. The yellow jersey, the biggest race, biggest bicycle race in the world. Yep, without a doubt. Is the yellow jersey more important than the, the rainbow stripe to win the world championships? That really is a good question. I think it depends. On, uh, on your view on things. Mm. I think most people will say it's the yellow jersey. Um, then some people will say it's the rainbow bands, but I, think, I don't think there's much between the two, but I think in terms of public perception, I think the yellow jersey might just edge it a little bit. I think that's more in the public consciousness, but maybe amongst cycling connoisseurs, right. the rainbow bands might just edge the yellow jersey, but I don't think there's much in it at all. So the guys that are going for the individual stage wins, the, the sprinters, yep. do they literally sit in the peloton in the draft all day long, not doing any work and wait for the final little sprint? Yeah, I mean, uh, they'll try, I mean, I wouldn't say not doing any work, but you're right, yeah. they'll do. They'll try and do the least amount of work that's okay. possible. So yeah, they'll sit in the, in the center of the peloton as best they can, which is essentially kind of a vacuum. Mm. And you know what it's like riding on a wheel. Yeah. Um, and they'll also have several teammates assigned to looking after them. So right. if they need to take a, get a rain cape, or if they need to get uh, a drink from the car, the rider will be protected. And if they need to move up the bunch, they'll also be protected from another rider. And the idea is to keep them almost like wrapped up in cotton wool mm. to finally deliver them in the yeah. last 250 metres or 200 metres of the race. So it's a big team game for that. Massively, okay. yeah. It really is. Although it's first across the line, yeah. it is a team game. And, and you see the, the sprinters, when they cross the line and they're interviewed by the press, the first thing they generally do, yeah. especially Cav, for example, Andre Greipel, is, is thank their team. And that's yeah. what, because it is a yeah. real team effort. Okay, now for the quickfire round. Here we go. Let's have a sip of tea. Yeah, Get yourself ready. So why do you wear Lycra? That's a good question. It's basically, in the old days, we're talking, I mean, even me, actually, I wore wool shorts in, when I first started riding. Yeah. And it was just adaptations in terms of yeah. fabrics, really. Wool shorts used to get gain water. They were very, very heavy, uncomfortable. Yeah. And then Lycra came along, and it was far more comfortable, breathable, etc. And increasingly, you see the closer fit, because it's, it's more aerodynamic, basically. Excellent and answer. Light. I must remind you, this is a quick fire round. Yeah, OK. Shaved legs. Why? Shaved legs. Um, it looks good, and it's easier for a massage. And also, when you crash, the hairs yep. don't uh, gather dust and dirt and hold on and get your wounds infected too. But it's also a bit posy. <laughs> How important are riding skills for winning races? Absolutely vital. I mean, obviously, it's so important in mountain biking, yep. equally vital in, in, the, tour, in the Tour de France or pro road racing, especially when you consider the descents, 
the different condition, different road conditions, but I think the most important skill is the ability to be able to ride in really close proximity within millimetres of another rider. Great, thanks for that and that. No problem at all. If you want to see more videos whilst here, you can click down there for Can Roadies Jump? And for what is harder, mountain biking or road riding, click just down here. Click just on this GMBN logo to subscribe, it's totally free, and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video.